Why didn't you say it the first time I said a a Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, a a Ron. A a Ron is here with hey some guys. real housewives of Scientology, uh, starring relatable Reese. How you doing? <laughs> Aaron, I just woke up from a little nap. How are you doing? Did you now? I really did. Jeff was like, Alexa, set a 30 minute timer. And I was like, that shouldn't, that's not. And I like passed out. And then I woke up like an hour and a half later. That's what I've been doing today. What have you been doing? I did take a nap this morning for the first time in a long, long time, but mainly because I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning, convinced myself that after I dropped all the kids off at school, I was going to go to the gym and get a quick start on the videos for the day. And then I got back to the house and I was like, oh, I think I'm going back to bed. And I don't think I got out of bed before like noon. Okay. That's more, that's more my speed. When I heard yeah. you say go to the gym, I was like, we don't have anything in common, do we? <laughs> I we do try to go to the gym every day. I don't know. Nothing what make in common. Nothing. <laughs> yes. For anyway. someone who doesn't have a weight problem, I'm pretty, uh, fixated on my weight problem yeah well you know there's plenty of uh plenty of things that we can help with yeah. that yeah yes what's that drug everyone's taking right now the uh ozempic oh for for the betas but i think it's a weight loss i don't think you'd be approved for that aaron you're too skinny i think anybody can get approved for anything no but i was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday who's about my age and does not have a weight problem and, and he told me he was taking Ozempic and I was like, how is that possible? He's like, you've got to try it. I said, uh, I've only got like maybe 15 pounds to lose. And he's like, well, how long have you had 15 pounds to lose? I mean, he's like, I haven't, he's like, I haven't changed anything. He's like, I'm not trying. Well, okay. Uh, he he's changed eating because Ozempic makes him not want to eat anymore. But he's like, I'm not dieting. He's like, I'm not, uh, he's like, I'm drinking as much <laughs> as, as ever I yeah. eat whenever I want. He's like, the, the thing is I don't want to eat anymore. Like Ozempic just makes you not want to eat. Yeah. So I take that only it's a different, it's the exact same class. It's a GLP one is what my doctor says. That's the class of Ozempic. So there's like a class of those drugs. I take it. I take Rebelsis. It's just the same thing. Um, same thing. I just went in for my three month check last month and she was like, well, good job. She's like, you've lost 12 pounds. I was like, I have, I don't eat. I just don't eat. I mean, I, except when you're on live streams. Oh, hilarious. Laugh it up. Grape nuts. I don't do that anymore. And we both know that you stepped over the line, Aaron, you know, you did. Um, no, I changed it to just drinking because I got my head ripped off for that. No, seriously though. I, um, you, you just don't eat. You're not hungry. I'll, yeah. I'll eat like maybe a sandwich a day and that's it. Yeah. So I, I know that I'm only ever about 12 weeks away from being in the best shape of my life. It's just that I'm always 12 weeks away from being in the best shape of my life. And I'm not going to lie. If there was something I could take that would just make me not want to eat, I might take it for 12 months, but Ozempic is really expensive from what I hear. And honestly, I would feel ridiculous. It's like, you're going to take a drug for 12 weeks instead of just getting your ass to the gym and stop stuffing your face at midnight. <laughs> Miss Withhold. Oh, that's a great name, especially for the real housewives of Scientology. We haven't even told everybody why we're why, what we're doing today yet. We're four we minutes into this thing already. Too busy talking about my snacking. Well, we've got a whole new mess of posts for you guys from the Scientology Moms Facebook group. And I figured Real Housewives of Scientology is the, the best name for these segments. That these was posts, clever. These posts are nothing but Scientology Mom humble brags about how my kid is more uptone, theta, and dedicated to Scientology than your kid. My kid skipped the implant station. Your kid's okay, a DB. Right. I was just going to say, you forgot one thing. My kid skipped the forgetter box. My kid didn't go through the implant station. That's really what this is about, if you notice. Welcome back, sir. Remember Rachel? Yes. Rachel didn't go through the dark side of the moon. Welcome back, sir. I'm still what every 12-year-old girl's dying to hear a room full of people say. It's so Rachel got the really bad end of the stick there. 
she was already, they welcomed her back. So they should have pulled out her old contract. I still think that's really unfair that she added a whole lifetime when she didn't have to. She had already right. put her time in. That's right. Actually, Rachel was 17, not 12, but um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's see. Should we die? So I basically went through these in chronological order and ones that I thought were good. I just put into the file for us to use. I didn't even necessarily select the best. In other words, I haven't gone through them all. I just kept going <laughs> yeah. until we had about, I just kept going until we had about 10 minutes before the stream started. And I was like, well, this is what we got. Yeah, there's no time to go through them all. We're really just going to have to to put them out there and go with it. Some of them probably aren't very good. Again, guys, I thought I had seconds. I was I was screenshotting as fast as I possibly could. So some of these, I, we don't know. I haven't gone through them myself. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump in. Oh, come um, on. These are, again, these are in no particular order. No, I know posting anonymous in a Scientology group is a little dicey. Uh, I'm surprised they even allow it, actually. It's but, weak. but now I bet these guys are very happy they posted anonymously. That's true. Um, <laughs> okay. So, you know, there's going to be a common theme in the post that we covered tonight. And it's going to be that people believe that Scientology and Scientologists have all the answers to all problems and that Scientology tech is the only necessary source of information to solve any problem. That is the common theme here. So uh -huh. anonymous says my one year old is fighting us at bedtime, hysterical, screaming and crying, begging to go outside. We did taking care of babies at four. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I don't, I, my kid's almost 14. What do I know? And he didn't put his exchange in either when he was one. I'm sure he cried. It's super <laughs> lazy. We did taking, I'm, I'm going to guess this is taking care of babies. We did taking care of babies at four months and have had no real or lasting sleep regressions. But now it's so different and very interbulating trying to put them to sleep for bedtime and naps. Interbulating is Scientology speak for just upsetting. Mm -hmm. I've tried CalMag. Ew, CalMag for a one-year-old? It's so bad. That's terrible. I've tried B1. Isn't B1 given in a shot? Can um, you take B1 orally? Oh, yeah. Oh. Right? Okay. Pretty sure. I mean, you can take anything orally. I mean. You can, you can probably give it to him in a liquid, maybe. I, what do I, I don't know. I'm sure Eric Berg has some concoction for the one-year-olds. Guys in the live chat, can you take B1 orally or is she giving a one-year-old B1 shots? I've heard people taking vitamin B1 shots. Okay. Um, we've tried CalMag. We've tried B1. I've also given them a locational in the room before putting them down. What other tools can I try? I don't want them to be upset like that for hours. My first thought is, so you don't have a mother a mother-in-law, a grandmother, a grandmother-in-law. You don't have people that you can ask this question to who've already got generations of experience taking care of babies. You're just asking a Scientology Facebook group. Not to mention, this contradicts everything. You've had billions of babies. You can't remember when you had a one. I mean, this is weird. We, I have my one-year-old is fighting us at bedtime, guys. Who can I ask out in the public universe? He's right. I mean, welcome to the world. You know what it probably is? Your one-year-old is fighting you guys because he's pissed that he picked Scientology parents. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> That's right. And, and and you clearly still have amnesia on the whole track because you can't remember how you dealt with your last thousand one-year-old babies that you had. So like you said... So someone's asking in the chat, what's a locational? That's a Scientology assist process is what they call it, where you literally this is uh, you just pick things in the environment and ask someone to look at it. And then don't forget the acknowledgement. The acknowledgement is important. So you go look at that wall. And if it's a baby, you can because uh, I've never given a baby a locational. I'm not sure. Do you do you make them look or you, ju you just thank them as if they had looked? I think you just thank them as if they had looked or you point them in that you, direction. I, squirreled it. I must you have squirreled it because so I you, made Huxley touch the object. I would say, look at that wall when he was like two months old. 
and then I would put his face toward it, but he didn't really seem to care. Cause again, I think he was mad that we, he was born into Scientology and then he would, I would make him touch the wall and then I would go good. So you totally squirreled the auditing command. Yeah. No wonder you have so much trouble with Huxley. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's no terrible. joke. That's no, terrible. No, it's, it's that's the terrible. truth. You know, it's the truth. So, but it's a location would be, look at that wall. Thank you. Look at the ceiling. Thank you. And you're supposed to just keep doing it for like, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 minutes until the person you're doing it to brightens up or stops being such a whiny little bitch or says they feel better or in a baby's case, stops crying and goes to bed. And then as you grow up and you learn how to speak, you learn how to fake it and go, Oh my God, thank you for this. I, everything's changed. Things are brighter. I feel like I just had cataract surgery. Exactly. You know how to get those, you know, those things aren't going to end until you say something incredible has happened. Yeah. Everything's so bright. Hey, do you prefer one or two? One or two? I kind of like two. Okay, good. Um, all right, let's see what else we next up in this exciting Real Housewives of Scientology. A child becomes happier and contributes after more sessions. This is from um, notorious child auditor, Diane Norgard. Uh, this at is a success Mace story. Kingsley. What's that? She's a, she's a child auditor at the Mace, Mace Kingsley Center. Righto. My son has become a happy kid through this program. Again, I guess they didn't pick a happy thing to be born into their baby. You had to, you had to juice him up with some auditing. You had to juice him. Um, okay. My, my son has become a happy kid through this program and us as well. He's a contributive member of the family. He's creative and nice to be around. Get a job, get off the Nintendo and get a job. You know, your six-year-old friend, Travis, he's the D E D Chicago, get a life, get a job. Be like Travis. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And he's finally nice to be around. These parents end up sort of like low key shitting on their kids. You think my kid was a nightmare to be around until we took him to Mace Kingsley and God, we're happy too. us as well. <laughs> he's finally happy in school. We'll maybe help him with his homework every once in a while. Stop abandoning him to go on post. <laughs> <laughs> his attention span is longer. He's more in present time. We're so happy. Thank you to the whole Mace Kingsley team and to LRH. Three cheers. Hip, hip. Hooray. Okay. <laughs> we have something to unpack here. I don't, he's six years old. What are we possibly expecting out of a six-year-old? <laughs> I can six barely get my 12-year-old to, to load the dishwasher. I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I'm dealing with 13 myself, but... <laughs> Maybe that was what we missed. We should have gone to Mace Kingsley. I don't understand. He's contributive member of the family. How was he what, contributing? What was he doing before? <laughs> he was so destructive. He'd leave his coloring books everywhere. Totally this CI. Is... Counter intention, guys. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got. Oh my goodness. This is uh we're getting into some NC-17 content here. Would you like to uh, take uh, do the honors on this one? Do I? Oh, I loved this one. I remember screenshotting this one. I was excited about it. Yeah, I'd love to. All right, guys. Uh, open up. Listen up. I have a question regarding impotence. Hard to... Did she spell that right? That's not right. She spelled it wrong. Hard, hard to get an erection. Of course, this is an anonymous member. <laughs> You know, if this were me, I'd be like, uh, so Jeff Quabell, I'd tag him. I'd be like, he has a problem with impotence and uh, he's super overweight. And here's a list of his medications. <laughs> I throw him under the bus. Okay. First hand looking for answers from someone who's actually had experience regarding this and actually succeeded, handled it, or from someone you heard handled it, not looking for advice. How would you give advice? If you never experienced this yourself, well, how could you give advice if you've never experienced something yourself? We did keto, did sessions recently. Oh my God, what an awkward session, you guys. Touch your Peter. Good. <laughs> Say hello to your Peter. Good. Or maybe they tried to give the Peter a locational. It was an audited, oh. it was an audited 2D assist this time. Looking around with old one eye. We did. I am looking for body handling. 
the sex drive is there, but it is not working. You mean Peter? Husband around 45. That sucks. It's probably because of the church you're in, dude. Uh, again, the sex drive is there. He's probably uh, stressed because Dan O'Connor got him to put $400,000 on the credit cards last week for the Ideal Org building. That's a fun one. That is so creepy to me. <laughs> Petered out, somebody said. What's going on here, Aaron? What's going on? How can you fix that with Scientology? Can you tell I, us, Aaron? I just don't know why they're not asking a Being fucking a Peter doctor. Over yourself? Like, ask... You're, you're asking a bunch of Scientology moms, ask a doctor. I mean, you can't scroll Facebook or Instagram for five minutes without seeing an ED ad. Or is that just me? No, I think it's just you and your search history. <laughs> Look how red Aaron is, you guys. He's like my <laughs> lipstick. I was like, I don't know what Google thinks about me that they're showing me hundreds of these ads every day. Is it because I'm getting older? I yeah, don't know. I think it's because you either talk about it or you're looking. You're looking. You're not telling us. Hey, there's nothing to talk about. My hands What's work that? just fine. That. I got totally normal sized hands. That? They work what great. Are you thinking See? About there? <laughs> what? Do, what? Do, what's that thought there? There. That. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that's disappointing, but you guys, this is a real thing. Like handling body issues is a thing with sessions. I I'm overweight. I've been complaining about that for a while and they were like, just get up the bridge. It'll handle itself. It's yeah. so weird. It'll oh. handle itself. If you can't handle it. <laughs> I mean, at no point does she say they've asked a medical professional. They did keto. So they asked Eric Berg, how can we fix my husband's dick? Okay. Mm -hmm. We did sessions. So they asked an auditor, how can I fix my husband's dick? And I'm looking for a body handling as opposed to what? I guess that means no, no, they're not looking for Scientology recommendations. Then why are you asking a bunch of Scientology real housewives? It's so weird. It's so creepy to me. Like yeah. in all seriousness, if that really was happening at 45, that would concern me a little bit for the guy. Or if I was a guy, I'd go get that checked out. I got bad news for this real housewife of Scientology. Your husband just doesn't find you attractive anymore. Deal with it. That's probably it. And your kid quit contributing when he was three. And <laughs> it's been a problem ever since. He doesn't like the kid anymore. Because he's not contributing like his friend Travis, who's the DED <laughs> Foundation Chicago. Oh, my goodness. That's a sad right. one. Why didn't I think to screenshot the comments? I think because I was going so fast trying to just get the main posts. Yeah. That's a shame. That's right. That. Hey, anyone else out there who's um, under the radar in the Scientology Moms group, uh, maybe you can pick off, pick up where Reese left off when they finally kicked her out of the group a couple of days ago. <laughs> That would be great. That would be great. I mean, oh unless unless your husband really has a problem. But I saw someone just say diabetes. Uh, Jeff has diabetes and we don't have any problems. But Cialis is one of our friends as well. So maybe that's why. But I can tell you right now, Jeff is very overweight and he's got the diabetes. And uh, we do the <laughs> hibbity dibbity all the time I'm, and go into pound town daily. So there's oh. something wrong with your husband, lady. And Oh, my God. He probably doesn't have a problem. He just has a girlfriend and he doesn't want to do it with you. That's what it is. He doesn't have a problem. Uh, you are the problem. And you know, and the person reading this is probably his mistress in the group. He probably has <laughs> a Scientology mistress that's reading it like, oh, whoops. <laughs> or there's someone in the comments that's like, my boyfriend had the same problem, but, and they're all, they're both talking about the same dude. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised Bummer. they didn't try um, actual chiropractic. That's usually what Scientologists do to fix everything. No mention of Dr. David Minkoff. That's usually who they go to fix everything. That's um, right. He usually just diagnoses them with Lyme disease and um, suggests that they uh, get some auditing. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Some, and then you get yeah. the auditing and the auditing doesn't help. So you go to Scientology mom's group. <laughs> okay. Diane Norgard is back. She is a frequent flyer in this group. Um, there's a game going to get as many people on service by September 22, 2023. If anyone would like some help with this, do let us know at Mace Kingsley. We are happy to help you and your children find and start your next service. You know, it just dawned on me. I don't know why this didn't occur to me. Mace Kingsley is using this Scientology Moms group as a recruiting pool for child preclears. 
I, I never don't know, thought of that either. I don't know why that has been lost on me this whole time. That's exact. Why would I bet Diane Norgard isn't even a mom? She's in this group looking for child preclears. That's absolutely accurate. And it's <sighs> worked because a lot of people go to Mace Kingsley. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the posts we're going to cover tonight are people just, you know, raving about having just put their two year old into auditing sessions because he was so lazy. Uh, out ethics, DB Crim. <laughs> uh, Did you make up Crim? Because I love it. I never oh, thought no. to use it before. Oh, staff members use that word all the time. Criminal. Is that a thing on the East Coast? Uh, Not in the I, Midwest. I, I didn't think that was an East Coast thing. That's a staff Sea Org thing. A flag awesome. thing, maybe. I love it. I'm going to start using it on Huxley. Quit being a crim. <laughs> yes, your crim exchange. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, just message me to help set that up. In the meantime, please comment on who is on service and or wanting to play. Interesting times on the planet. The best time for putting more sanity and joy into the world by eradicating case and applying the workable technology we do have. Sure we do. And why the hell is Jillian jumping in saying, oh, because someone, oh, because she invited everyone in the comment section to say what service they're on. Who is on service? Okay, because there, there you go. There's some dick swinging right there. I'm on yeah. seven. That's that's the big thing, guys. Everybody, if you're on the OT levels, it's like they have to voice it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm on seven. <laughs> Right. There's gonna be oh look, it's the number one real housewife of Scientology. Yes. Yeah. Swing and dick. Yes. It won't let me scroll this to the side, which is a pain nice in the butt. Jacket, dude. What a nerd. Um, build your dynamics, a two-day workshop to power up your dynamics. Oh, so this is actually Elena's thing. Uh I want to help reach ev I want to help everyone reach heightened levels of success. By applying LRH Tech, I've been able to expand further, reaching more people to achieve the mission we are all here for, helping this planet. My purpose is to empower women, to protect children and restore the family dynamic on this planet. Let's change mankind. Um okay. So she's going to do a workshop on how you too can marry a fake billionaire who will be in prison in the next few years. Speaking of fake, her smile, she can't even do it because her lips are so injected. Do you see that? I it's do like, see that. They're so puffy that like that doesn't even look like a real smile. That's the exact I'm same so face she makes when she's squeezing out a giant steamer on the toilet. It's I all wonder, the same. It's the only expression she can the make. one who posted about her husband's it problem. Oh, because well, she couldn't give his name. I think Grant's over 60, so. Oh, is he? Is he really? Yeah. Oh, gross. Discover how to create limitless personal expansion. Unlock new levels of personal success. Move your family to the top of the bridge. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Dollars a ticket. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how much of that money goes all just to Scientology like or like I, I've always been surprised that that flag seems to let Grant run his own seminars out of the flag land base. There's no there's no way they'd let him do that unless that money was going to Scientology. But I, but I've always wondered what the true um, agreement is there. Yeah. We'll never know. Um, but yeah, you want to talk about Real Housewives of Scientology? She's the leader of the group. She is, and he's the ultimate dick swinger <clears> of the group. <throat> Okay, so now we have – this is the kind of stuff – again, I don't know why they're posting this shit in a mom's group, but this week I finished level zero. So that's like the first professional auditor training course. Yeah. Auditing other people, not auditing yourself. Uh, I'm so thrilled about it. I've wanted to train for a long time, and I'm so glad to be doing it now. There's lectures on this course that gave me all of the fundamental hatting I've needed and wanted as a Scientologist and as an auditor. Priceless. Okay. The theory thoroughly padded me on who, what, when, where, why, and how to audit. Level zero gives all the basics of auditing, and it fills in any missing data one might have passed along the way. Auditing my PC was amazing and thrilling. I got to see my PC break through barriers and have 
huge life-changing wins. That was the absolute best. I could see how the tech was helping her, and I saw her blow considerations and stops completely change her and completely change her point of view on things that had been big barriers for her. And while I was seeing her wins, I was also having so many cognitions of my own. Auditing her instantly changed how I now communicate and operate in life. It just feels so much better. That's not the end of it. And doing level zero is having such a positive effect on my solo auditing. I know I will now finish OT7 faster and better because of what I have learned and the skills I gained on level zero. Um, that's not, uh, uh, okay. That's not, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I really believe everyone should train before doing OT seven, but she's like, but I didn't, I didn't, but now, <laughs> <laughs> but now that I did my training after I started OT seven, I really believe everybody else should do the thing I didn't do because it makes you the best possible auditor. And who doesn't want that for themselves? I just wanted to share cause it's pretty exciting and it's there for everyone to experience. If I can answer any questions or help you in any way to have the key outs, wins, and gains from training, please let me know. By the way, this was all about me in a Scientology mom's group. Yeah. And I didn't mention my children at all. It was just me, me, me. Me, 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 me. And I'm on seven, everyone, in case you didn't know it. Did I tell you I'm on seven? Elena's like, I'm OT8. Did you see my jet? I'm so depressed that we didn't take that opportunity when we were in to lie. I wish we could have gone to other orgs and been like, I'm on seven. So <laughs> yes, just I'm on seven. <laughs> oh, cause you get a certain amount of respect. It's a big deal. Like you're automatically your ass is kissed. If you're on seven, this one might've been stupid. This might've been a dumb one. I don't know. Again, I was just, Quickly the going. reason I put this in here is because I wanted to get some um, under the radar Scientologists in the live chat to let us know what's up with the volunteer hours thing here. So it says, calling all my Florida race volunteers. Hey, Clearwater, Florida, we've got an exciting opportunity for you, a great opportunity to get those volunteer school hours in. I, I didn't know if this was a Scientology thing or is this a school thing? I didn't understand it and i just wanted them to see we're teaming up with nicole geller at iron man kids for the rock and roll running series and we need your help i got so many messages on facebook asking if this rock and roll running series has had anything to do with scientology and i told them no because scientology is not putting it on but you see how they'll turn almost anything into yeah. a scientology activity um even though it's not really yep there you go yeah. so Nothing, nothing amazing there. Um, oh, it's from Ari Walker again. Is she's that the one, one that you know? Yeah, she's the one. Um, Liz Brenner was her mother. Liz Brenner was a very well well known Sea Org member at Flag. Um, Ari Brenner, Mariah Brenner, Serge is in the chat. Serge, who are the other Brenner sisters? Um, he knows them. He knew them all well. So yeah, okay. so let's see. Ari says, hi moms. I have to share the below miraculous win from one of my selectees. Guys, a selectee is, so there's a relationship. There's an FSM, a field staff member, and a selectee. They're, they're two sides of the same coin. An FSM is someone who makes money helping other people uh, get into Scientology and keep doing Scientology. A selectee is the person for whom the FSM is receiving commissions, okay? So, um, Okay, miraculous win from one of my selectees who's making progress through their survival rundown. Their survival rundown is the the it's the lowest it's the lowest one of the lowest auditing levels in Scientology, and it's the type of auditing that's all about touching the environment and walking around in the environment and looking at the environment. Um, it's called objective auditing instead of subjective auditing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's sure a reason why I work hard to be a great FSM and get my kids and other friends into ideal orgs. So here's the win. Dude, unbelievable. Dude. Bruh. Is this credit card down? Bruh, dude, get your money right. On Survival Rundown 8C Part C, we're not going to define that. It's just a, it's an auditing action. So I lifted something 500 pounds last week and totally what? messed up my lower back. Do you think he was trying to lift up that wife that was posting that her husband couldn't get it up anymore? That could be. What is 500 pounds that you're lifting? I don't know anyone that's trying to lift something 500 pounds. I don't either. That's, um, I wish they could have named the object. 
Okay. So he tried to lift 500 pounds and he totally messed up his lower back. Cairo, massage, keto, assists, <laughs> locationals, not getting better. Cairo told me yesterday that I need an MRI. So I go to do SRD session again and one hour in, all the pain blows. Oh, God. Totally gone. I could barely get in and out of truck that morning and jumped right in the same evening. My 2D, which is Scientology speak for girlfriend, my 2D was like, what the heck? And then I was like, what the heck? That's oh, my God. There's true magic to going up the bridge. And it's all part of the true freedom that L. Ron Hubbard has laid out for us, our friends, our kids, family, and those on this planet to achieve. We just need to walk it ourselves and get – is there the rest of it? Oh, I guess yeah. – yeah, there is. And get others to do so. Hashtag get up the bridge. Hashtag help others. Well, there's no reason to do these hashtags on Facebook. What does that have to do with anything? It has Aaron, that's to do the with worst anything. success story I've ever heard. I was yeah. like, what the heck? And she was like, what the heck? And then I was, and then I was like, dude. Bruh. Bruh. Oh, is this the future of Scientology? What a time to be alive. Dude, where's my back pain? <laughs> Who's lifting 500 pounds? Yeah. So, but you know, the reason I actually left this in there is because this is a perfect example of even though L. Ron Hubbard never says it's against the rules to go to the doctor or anything, this idea that he thinks an auditing session actually, an auditing session that had nothing to do with his back actually was the source of his back pain going away. And he truly believes it. And if you were to go, but what's the cause and effect relationship there he'd be like there doesn't there doesn't have to be a cause and effect the cause is that you're fixing the thetan with auditing and the thetan is senior to the physical universe and is senior to the body and it doesn't it, it doesn't it, the auditing wasn't even related to the back he's just sitting there going auditing makes thetan better thetan makes body better it's just magic and that's just kind of a small example of why scientologists so often either uh, get screened for cancer, catch cancer so late, delay treatment of cancer until it's too late is because there's just this magical idea that auditing will make thetan better, better thetan will make body better. That's correct. It's, that's that's all there is to it. It's not even more complicated than that. Especially with that dud of a human being. And I was like, bruh, yeah. dude, that was the worst. Yeah. Okay, let's see what Aaron Lisi has for us. Hello, mamas. Do they tell everyone in this group to start their posts with hello, mamas? No, because some of them start with, I just have a huge win I wanted to share. Oh, okay. <laughs> As a reminder, we can create a big impact. Here's how we can help get rid of the black PR. Google reviews left for the various different churches. When I started posting about this originally, I believe Flag only had two or three stars due to black PR posts from SPs. <laughs> now Flag has over four stars. Oh. And many of the bad reviews have been removed because I've shown people how to report them properly. Take a look at the screenshots below. Take 10 minutes of your time to go to the Google reviews page for every org you're associated with, including field groups like Mace Kingsley, and leave them a good, honest review, as well as reporting any suppressive black PR reviews. It makes a huge difference. If you are easily re-stimulated by these sort of comments, then simply leave your review to have a positive impact rather than reading the negative comments and reporting them. Please share this in your local org groups as well. Scientologists are, are supposed to be able to confront the most evil things without flinching and avoiding, but God forbid they get triggered by reading a bad PR review from a dirty SP on Google. It's in theta. It's no joke. I'm kind of glad you went into that, Aaron, because that is so true. Any type of anything that's not ideal or really happy, we we don't look at. It's in theta. I couldn't tell my father-in-law for nine months that I divorced his son because it was bad news. I had to pretend we were still married because he couldn't handle it. It's bad news. And this is a real thing. Like they can't confront it. What I want to know is why did flag have bad reviews at all in this OT universe? I know they have like a thousand Seerg members. Why don't, 
every one of the Seerg members just log in and leave a good review for Flag. Oh, yeah, because they're not allowed on the internet. Uh, but there's also like tons of OTs. I'm just wondering why there was even any bad stars at all. That's shocking. It's true. They should have been able to handle the physical universe with their postulates and intention. And um, but apparently the internet exists in some nether region separate from the physical universe beyond the ability of the OTs to control. I never considered that. Wild. Yeah. Okay, Marcy Sargent. I feel like Marcy works for Mace Kingsley as well. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Join us at the, the Church of Scientology of the Valley for an incredible seminar led by Marcy Sargent. Learn the LRH tech on how to maintain high ARC with your child. Use good control with your children. How to handle upset children. Well, that's easy. You send them to the RPF. Um, or a camp or something. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Now, this is a hands-on seminar that teaches the stable data necessary to raising children in today's world i don't know does hands on like like that guy like the dan o'connor kind the, david does are they gonna let dan in, in there to sling fax machines at unruly children as i say hands on i'm pretty i mean i think of dan o'connor when i think hands on i think that's why it's capitalized yeah i i found the capitalization on this thing to be a little troubling a hands-on seminar on how to handle upset children what the hell does that mean um pretty sure it means Hands on, Dan's on. Yeah, I think of Dan. I think he'll be there. Special guest, Dan O'Connor. He must be a... Um, so this is October 1st. So this just happened nine days ago. The $30 fee includes materials plus a consultation with Marcy. So I, I think the reason... What I thought why I wanted to leave this in here is like Scientologists are supposed to just through studying Scientology have the tech to handle everything. And these people are constantly saying they don't know how the hell to handle their upset children. Which, why don't they just take the advice of any of the celebrities out there when they look at the camera and say, you want to know about it? Just read a book, read a book. Why do we need this group? Why do we need to go help me? Somebody, my kids are jumping off the roof. Just read a book. I don't understand. LRH, I mean, according to Scientology, LRH has the answers. Why are we having seminars? Why are we Why are we complaining and talking about it? Isn't the tech, like there are three children's courses. We went over those. How to yeah. raise happy children, how to have babies that produce around the house and paint the walls and shit for you and put things together and contribute. Why are we complaining about this in this group? Yeah. And also the idea that L. Ron Hubbard had the answers on how, oh, by the way, maintaining high ARC just means um, a, a, a good, strong, relation, loving relationship. Like L. Ron Hubbard had some of the worst relationships with his children of, of, of anyone, but he's got the tech on how to do it. Do as he say, not as he does. You know what I wish? I wish this was in the future, this seminar, so that some people could call that number and sign up for it. Well, maybe they can say, so maybe some people can call this number and say, I had such great wins at the last seminar. I would just like to know when the next Marcy Sargent seminar is on how to maintain ARC with your children and see if we can find out. I mean, it would be fun to continue what we started here, guys. Do some undercover work. I can't do it all. Yeah. Oh boy, I feel like this is a long one. Um, let's just go through it. Kat Jordan, who is someone I actually know. Okay. Uh, is she in Clearwater? Um, it was either Clearwater or LA, I forget. Hi, mamas. Hi, real housewives. I've been helping my son with some LH references over the past few days. And this cycle has had me thinking about all the hatting I've done with him in Scientology Basics since he was little. I wanted to share it with you guys. Of course you oh, did. Boy. Let's this brag is such, about this, these are such great examples of how Scientologists actually speak. That's one of the. That's what I like about it. They may not be that interesting, but like for these guys who don't know anything about it, it's interesting to see how they talk. Yeah. In the wild. Long before I was a mom, I had some great examples of parenting as a Scientologist and my friends who had kids before me. One friend in particular many years ago said, kids don't learn Scientology by osmosis. It stuck with me and I decided I'd one day give my kids the respect of some good hatting on Scientology basics with references 
just as had been done with me when I first walked into an org when I was 19. Okay. In other words, I'm going to shove it down their throats and make them into good Scientologists. Yes. And treat them just like an adult. Correct. When my son was about a month old, I put him in session at Mace Kingsley here in Clearwater. <laughs> 30 days old, he was rocking and rolling on the cans. That's how I show my kids respect. I throw That's them into an auditing session. That's right. That's right. The winds were incredible to observe. <laughs> what in the hell is she talking about? <laughs> How do you know the winds of a one month old? Oh my God. Then when he was two, I had him in kids group processing in Los Angeles every weekend. What a fun weekend. Come on. <laughs> we're going to group processing again. No pizza for you. <laughs> When he was a little older, I put the Dianetics picture book in the Scientology picture book by his bed, and he would look at them here and there when he was curious in more detail as he got older and had more questions. Because he wasn't allowed any other books, by the way. We put those by his bed, and that's all he got. Yeah. I was lucky enough to have him in applied scholastics school from kindergarten. Now, APS schools, applied scholastics is the Scientology uh, a licensed curriculum for um, scholastic programs. So it's basically Scientology education. Uh, okay, I was like, uh, the, the, the key part of it is it's probably, like how would you even distinguish this curriculum? That there's zero mention of any mental health, anything, right? Like an right. APS curriculum would be completely barren of anything to do with mental health or anything like that. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. So I was lucky enough to have him in applied scholastic schools from kindergarten. So we got basic study tech there and did learning how to learn a couple times in school. What a DB. He didn't get it the first time. I was going to say, why did we have to redo that? Cram. Wow. <laughs> Poor kid. Lower conditions there. He's like, I just want to watch cartoons. Study your L. Ron Hubbard dictionary course. The one by your bed that's been there since you were a month old. Yeah. Oh, my God. I put the illustrated tone scale on the wall in the hallway at his eye level. Oh, my God. This is hardcore. This is mean. This is just getting mean. This is Read the next sentence. Look at the next sentence. We talk about it in passing, then added the Hubbard chart of human evaluation, social and antisocial characteristics, ARC and KRC triangles, the code of honor and other things oh, as it occurred to me. That's but the data, a lot. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. How old is this kid at this point? He just said as he got older. I mean, I didn't even know about this stuff till I was probably nine. Yeah. Like that's some hard, that's don't do, don't you agree, Aaron? Like for a child, that's heavy. The human chart of evaluation, social, <laughs> antisocial characteristics. The no child, no child has the vocabulary to even understand what's in those things. We went through a number of Div Six course packs this way too. Div Six, Div Six is the introductory courses in Scientology. I'd method seven the words and concepts. Okay, oh. that's a that's a way of studying and helping someone. Um, it's, word clearing. it's it's explaining the definition of a word to somebody instead of making them do it on their own in a dictionary. Yeah. I'd M7 the words and concepts as best I could according to his attention span and interest at the time. No force, just, oh. hey, hey, she'd never hit a child, but she'd shake the shit out of one, okay? No force. I just taped all this shit to the wall, and uh, we didn't let him look at anything else, and we wouldn't feed him until he finished his courses. <laughs> we like to do this with ARC, guys. No force. That's how Marcy Sargent told us to do it. Um, no force, just, Hey, this might be interesting. Or I thought of something that might help you with, okay. So you're just trying to manipulate your child. I mean, okay. Oh, something randomly just occurred to me. What's this say on the wall there? <laughs> the BTK killer treated his children better than this. <laughs> That's awful. This is really hardcore. Like, it, do you agree? Like this is a hardcore Scientology parent. Yeah. This is the parent who's sending their 10 year old into the Seerg recruiter to, uh, to, to sign up. 
a hundred percent. But like, this is like, they're not letting this kid look at anything else. It's like straight Scientology from, from one month old. Is this the same pose from the one month old? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is hardcore. I always told him that these things and the assists he was given were Scientology and came from L Ron Hubbard. And it was always with the idea that this might help him out with his situation. Oh, he naturally, okay. naturally reached for more. Wait, wait, you wait. He naturally reached for more. But just a second ago, you said, I always told him this came from, but organically he just wanted more. I don't know why this is all you're feeding him. He must be a past life. Sierra exec. Welcome back, sir. Welcome back, Rachel. Uh, going to Osa. Guys, like this is like a piece of veal. He's never left a cage. He's <laughs> literally been in the cage the whole time. And then I love how she puts this win on it. Like he naturally reached. <laughs> no, yeah. he didn't. This is full on manipulation from one month old. Sorry she's to stop still you, Aaron. He's still so young. He can't read. He can't even read. Kid he can't even read. Look, he naturally reached for more. So when he could read well enough to do a course at the org, I spoke to the Reg before we went in, asking him to please handle him just as they would any new Div 6 public uh -huh. rather than talking to me about him as I thought he would appreciate that. Oh, she means in like the Reg interview and everything. Yeah. Or the supervisor? Oh, the Reg. So she wanted her child to get the, the real experience as if he was the one buying and paying up and signing for the Watch course. Watch your not, pocketbook, Billy. Not get as if he was just out. the child of a Scientologist. Right. Treat him the same. That's, this that's sounds crazy. like Lydia Hopwood. This sounds like Lydia level crazy. She's in this group. I know exactly who that is, but I don't know who she is. You know what I mean? Being oh, I know Lydia group, in real life. She is as insane in real life as she seems on Facebook. Oh. She's I, a crazy person. Sounds like a real winner. I'd love to yeah. meet her. I think Charles Verhoff is her brother. Do you happen to know Charles Verhoff? Mm -mm. He was in the Sea Org um, in LA, and I, he married Jody Johnson. It's a very small world in Scientology, you guys. It sure is. Um, uh, everyone, every Scientologist in the United States probably knows one of those three people, Lydia Hopwood, Jody Johnson, and Charles Verhoff, except you. Definitely, definitely Lydia Hopwood. I know who that is only because of these mom groups. She posts right. in them all the time. Okay. So by the way, by the way, how old do you think a kid has to be before they're quote unquote, um, old, uh, can read well enough to do a course at the org nine, 10, like to do an intro level course, like, uh, uh, have your hand held through an intro level course, 10, 11. I mean, what, younger, I, I guess for, I guess for a, a lazy kid. I mean, I was doing courses in Washington, DC at five. Oh, I, so I guess what I really meant is how old do we think this kid is? You think he could be as young as five at this point? Um, yeah, because isn't he kind of just getting well enough to read? All I remember is that when I was in first grade with Mrs. Andrews, we were all sitting in a circle and we would read the big book. Okay. When I was in kindergarten, we were still learning the letters of the alphabet in the balloon animals. So I feel like I started to read in the first or second grade, but I don't think I could have read an intro Scientology course. But then again, I probably went to the implant station and I wasn't an OT child. I was just going to say... I'm sorry to evaluate for you, but it sounds like you went through the implant station. I'm sorry for you. There's nothing that can be done about that. Get your, uh, get your manners in. But I remember um, Mrs. Andrews was my first grade teacher and Mrs. Rosenswag is my second grade teacher. And she even watches some of these videos. Hi, Mrs. Rosenswag. Seriously? That's adorable. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Can you get a picture? Can, can Mrs. Rosenswag provide a picture of us when you were in second grade? Cause I bet it was so cute. Oh, I can pull up some pictures from... That would be then. adorable. We'd love to see that, please. Um, and Mrs. Rosenswag had like three inch fingernails and all of the kids in school who had loose teeth that needed to have them pulled would go to Mrs. Rosenswag and she would use her long fingernails and yank those teeth out. And, but, it, but, but like only when the kids asked her to, like they want, they're like, I want Miss Rosenswag to pull my, it was sort of a, a thing she was known for. I didn't think this video could get any darker, but that <laughs> story just took a really dark turn for me and I'm deeply uncomfortable by it. I don't no, know. She, but she, everyone loved her. Everyone loved her. I'm sure they did. They were in second grade. Um, 
I may have a hard time going to sleep tonight. Three inch fingernails, <laughs> pulling children's teeth really well, gives me the creepers. When you're that little, everything seems huge. So, I mean, it, it might've just been, or as, as Mark Headley would say, six inches. Um, okay. <laughs> I kind of want to move away from this story. It's making me feel uncomfortable all over my body, but I would like to see some pictures of you from second grade when you were freshly out of the implant station. Um, I can pull some up later when I have access to my text messages before we end the chat. Stay, stay until the end guys for uh, pictures of uh seven year old, eight year old Aaron. Um, and then if you don't mind, Aaron, just never mention that story again, <laughs> please about Mrs. Rosenberg or swagger or whatever her name Rosen's, is. Rosen's swag. She was the best. Okay. All right then. Well, she sounds like a sweet lady and no judgment uh -huh. here. Um, I think this kid is of reading age. Is that, is that how you're putting this together? I would say this kid is six, seven at this point in this story. Okay. All right. Okay. So when he could read well, okay. So I, uh, I told the div six, uh, um, to handle him just as they would any new div six public rather than talking to me about him as I thought he would appreciate that. I introduced him to his very own registrar and explained his job. I asked if he'd like me to come into the office with him or wait outside and he wanted his own comp cycle. So I waited nearby with the credit card. He was so keyed out and proud to have Scientology for himself and to have his own comm lines in the org. Do you want to say what? Something? I know this. No, is I'm just, he's, so, this is, this is some next level stuff here, guys. Like, I would say my dad was like this, but like apparently as I grew up in Scientology and got older in Scientology, they're not all like this. Like this is, this is some crazy pressuring of a child. Yeah. Um, they say never go full Lydia Hopwood. This woman has gone full Lydia. And by the way, keyed out just means like really happy, really excited about something. And then someone said implant station, Aaron. Yeah. You could probably give a better, quicker idea of what that is. Oh, what is the implant station? So Scientologists believe that um, when you when this body dies, you as a spirit have already been programmed by our alien psychiatrist um, captors to shoot back over to the implant station, which is basically just a, a place that electronically wipes your Thetan memory of all your, your past life memories and then shoots you down into a new baby body. Uh, and that's why Scientologists call earth a prison planet and that these are um you know we're prisoners on this in this planet in these bodies in the physical universe hatting just means training so training someone oh yeah because scientologists will use the word wear your hat this is your hat i wear many hats um and hatting is scientology slang for just training teaching someone how to do something and they use it all the time like i have my wife hat on i'm wearing my mom hat or yes. i have my student hat on when you're at the org doing a course they just use it like that yes. um when I was in grade school and we would have friends over and maybe my brother or I forgot to do the dishes or something, my mom would scream, wear your hat. And then my non-Scientologist oh. friends would be like, you got to wear a hat. Oh my God. Why, did, why does your mom tell you you got to wear a hat? I'm like, no, it's got a special meaning. <laughs> wear your hat. I'm sure my dad said that. My dad always said, get your TRs in all the time, all the time. Yeah. Okay. So she thinks that this kid was happy because he wanted Scientology all to himself and all of his own calm lines. He had his own people to ask questions of other than just his mom. By the time he was seven. Okay. I was like, right. I knew right. it. The I knew was it. Fucking six years old this whole time. Five or oh, six. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Okay, by the time he was seven, he'd conversationally tell me things like, well, I'm a Scientologist, so, and I'm going to go OT, so. Uh, we've had some stops and starts. Well, he took a break between seven and eight, did some, had a, that period where he was hooked on math. Okay. Oh, my God. We've had some stops and starts. Seven years old. Yeah. He went through that phase, but he got it out of his system young. Okay. He's done lots of auditing, Div 6 courses, and finished Student Hat this year and is now on the Survival Rundown and plans to go clear in the next year. Well, I'm glad your nine-year-old has plans seven. to go. Well, I was assuming that maybe he wasn't still seven. You can't Hold do on, the Student Hat when you're six. You can't do the Student. Why not? No, no, it wouldn't be possible. 
Um, so by the time he was, well, she said by the time he was seven, he was saying things like this, but she doesn't say how long ago that was. So you're right. He's probably a right. Cause you can, LRH says someone can go clear by the age of eight. Doesn't he? I don't know. There's no eight year old clears in Scientology. You can't, you can't audit. You just couldn't, you just couldn't even audit an eight year old on new era Dianetics. So this kid's probably what, like 10? He could be 10, but he has plans. Mm -hmm. But does he have the income? Kid, does he does he have the income to buy those Better intensive? Get your money right, kid. Get your money right. You need to talk to Grant, Uncle G. Oh, oh he's seventeen. Oh. oh, is there more? Jesus. There's okay, more. let's keep going. I need to know. Okay, now he's seventeen, and he's been having a hard time recently with certain things. Uh oh, I wonder what things. I wonder why he's seventeen. He should have everything together by seventeen. I realized that these hatting sessions had fallen out. Everything I could think to tell him to help. I start to give my viewpoint, but then realize that my viewpoint is formulated in large part based on the Scientology that I have learned and applied over the years. And I don't actually want him to have my viewpoint. Oh, I want, I thought she was, I want him to have L Ron Hubbard's viewpoint. I mean, sure his you own, his own pro survival viewpoint and decision. That's why we started him at 30 days old. We want him to have his own viewpoint. Aaron. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Um, I want him to have his own pro survival viewpoint and decisions made that are based on his own good calculations. So I pulled out references for him. By the way, what do you think he was having trouble with? <laughs> that could be a lot of things. It could be a lot of things, couldn't it? You think, you think he's smoking pot? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he, uh, I'm surprised reefer? he's 17 and he's not in the Sea Org. Maybe, maybe she's just having problems getting him to sign up for the Sea Org. I do wonder what he's having problems with. Um, based on the stuff that she's pulling out, I have some sus suspicions. Okay. So I pulled out the references for him and have watched him have the most beautiful cognitions on the code of honor, the chart of human evaluation, tone scale, responsibility, the auditor's code, et cetera, as they apply to what he's confronting right now. It's a very different story now that he's a near adult and has new situations to apply the data to. It's been such a win for the both of us. And I just wanted to communicate on it and recommend continually hatting our kids in Scientology basics. To me, there's nothing as satisfying as knowing the kids we love so much have the tech to help them in life too. Never too early or too late. Right, Grandma? It's uh, such a beautiful thing when at the age of one, you start taping all of LRH's references all over the house. Uh, this was a... This is a sick one for me. That's pretty gross. She really, really shoved it down this kid's throat. You know what's going to happen? In 10 years, this kid's going to be blown from the Sea Org, probably living on the streets, a drug addict, like something horrible. And you know what they'll do? Guys, this is the sad part about this story. You saw how hardcore this woman was. That's my dad. That's the female version right there of my dad. She will turn that kid away so fast. That mm. kid will be dead to her. Do you agree, Aaron? Because she's focused. She's so like just tunnel vision on Scientology that the second that kid says, F you, I'm out of here. And this was shoved down my throat. And I realize it now. She's going to go, bye. Definitely. You're dead to me. Definitely. And then he'll and, be doing a live stream with us. And then she'll have to get sex checking on why she gave birth to a SPDB crim who was just trying to destroy her and Scientology. Yep. Despite yep. all of her best efforts. He will be tossed to the side and jettisoned, and it will be just like me. He'll just be an evil, mm -hmm. evil soul. Yeah. Okay, we got another real housewife of Scientology who chose to post anonymously. Well, this is interesting. What's this uh, anonymous shit? This one shouldn't oh, be point. anonymous. Let's check this out. This is... This is a little uh, Scientology after dark here. Oh, really? Sort of mom related because all you mamas have mothers. My father-in-law would hate me posting this, so I'll do it anonymously. He's a total catch. All bow, right. Chicka bow wow. I like it already. How old is he? 65. He's looking no, it's for- a little a, young. A little long, young for you, right? It's a little young for me, but let's see. Let's see. What else? Yeah. Does his Peter work? Because the last guy was 45. Well, just wait. He's looking for a lady who wants to be romanced half to death. Um, here's his man stats. Gross. 
at first I thought it said main stats and I had to read it again. Like, no, it actually says man stats. He's, he's about 65 ladies. Ew, he's what fit. does romance half to death mean though? That gives me like Pepe Le Pew vibes. Hey, Pepe, Pepe Le Pew was a hero. Okay. I had this ar argument the other night. I think he's a little creepy. I don't want to be blazed a on. trail for sexual offenders for the next 40 years. Dan O'Connor style. Harvey okay. Weinstein was raised on Pepe Le Pew. Okay. Okay. That's more like it. Okay. Go okay. on. Go on. I mean, Pepe, Pepe was half Harvey, half Dan O'Connor slinging them faxes and slinging that dick. I shouldn't yeah. have said that. That's... You know, we're, we're an hour into the stream. I can get away with it. Aaron, it's also fun. I just like it when you let loose. <laughs> we like it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, I want to see how no many people just, just, just ended the video right there. I hope not. Let's keep an eye on that. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, he's about 65. Uh, he's fit with no health issues and exercises regularly. He cleans. He cooks. Look out, Jeff. He organizes. He irons and does laundry. Then what the hell? I was, oh, I was, oh, okay. So he's single. That's the point. Who okay. irons anymore? <laughs> 2023, what a weirdo. You know, instead of ironing these days, I'll just get out of the shower and put on the shirt that I want to get the wrinkles oh out my. of it. Okay. And then, uh, so I'll get it because I'm hot when I get out of the shower because I wear, take those hot showers. So, it, so I, so it gets, it gets a little wet and it gets hot and then I hang it up and I don't have to iron anymore. That's kind of sad, but I get it. Okay. <laughs> it would probably be so much easier to just iron. <laughs> or get a steamer, just steam or get a I flat always, iron. And just, whenever I just iron my shirts, iron. whenever I iron my shirts, they get shiny and I don't like it. Okay. It's way too much work. We'd like okay. to see that scene. Give it a but try. Look, and we'll but vote, look, we'll vote on it. The anonymous lady, 65 year old father-in-law irons. That's all that matters here. Yeah, I'm um, kind of it. Jeff, look out. He lives in Paris oh, lives and in Paris. Clearwater with a condo Ooh. in each. Okay. He was in a power condition on the 2D when his wife passed away. 40 years of continued create. That's one of the best Scientology paragraphs we've ever read out loud. <laughs> power condition? How how do we know he was in a power condition? I guess if you're married to someone for 40 years, uh, you assign yourself a condition of power. Yeah. How do we know he wasn't cheating? How do we know he didn't kill her? How do we know he wasn't on the cheating side of town? Yeah. We don't. If he had a place in Paris and Clearwater, that dude was cheating. He, isn't Paris like the place where there's mistresses? Jeff tells me that. They have mistresses in Paris. Oh, you mean like it's a, a socially acceptable thing over there? Yeah. He's a liar and a fraud. I don't Power know. Power condition. Give me a fucking break. Okay. <laughs> this isn't even her father. It's her father-in-law. Why do we need to promote this guy in a Scientology moms group? First of all, it's a group with little kids. Most of them have little kids. What are we doing with this 60? Nobody likes old men except me. <laughs> That's creepy. Um, but, but also there was, what was, uh, you just reminded me of something there. Uh, oh, it, if she's, if she's so proud of her father-in-law, why is it an anonymous post? Oh, she's doing it. So the father-in-law won't be pissed off at her. Yeah, but he, so, if he's, first of all, men aren't allowed in this group, so he's not going to know about it. But even if he did, he's going to know it was her. He's going to read his man stats and know it was her. What an idiot. Yeah. She's anyway, clearly not on seven. Hey, any of you under the radar Scientologists, if anyone knows who, who, put, who did this post or who the father-in-law is, you can message me at growingupinscientology at gmail.com. Okay, his ideal scene, this is another just gorgeous Scientology paragraph. His ideal scene would likely be a lady who uh, likely a lady or definitely a lady. Yeah. I don't understand. What? Okay. okay. Maybe I read the whole sentence. A little bit of both. Would likely be a lady who wants to create a relationship full of love, who's willing to dance with him and enjoy the finer arts in life. All right. Well. Dance with him, like answer the bone phone and get down or like a real dance. What do we mean? I need... <laughs> like, I know I saw that or was it him posting? Yes. I got to say, if if you are all of those things, your daughter-in-law shouldn't be having to anonymously post on Facebook to find you 
finds you a, a thing. You know, she didn't even say where he's at, where he is at on the bridge. So that means he's not OT or she would have said that. Um, That's true. Anyway, I don't know. Lots of questions on this. One. I don't think we really care. I think Scientologists care more about what it's, what's in his bank account. Oh, there's more. Okay. Um, it, who's willing to dance with him and enjoy the finer arts in life. He speaks French as his first language, a little Ooh. Italian, and speaks English fluently like a Frenchman. You know what that means, right? No, but I'm kind of liking this guy. I'm starting to feel attracted. I'm starting to feel man, 2D vibes. This man is clearly a cunning linguist. All right. That's that's what we want. That's what the gals want. Okay, that's, well. That's what she's really trying to say here. Okay. He speaks English fluently like a French man. Come on. We know what you're saying. Okay. Are you serious? Or are you making a joke? <laughs> I just came out of an ice cube. Sometimes I don't, I don't follow. I like that though. Although... <laughs> Jeff's a very right. cunning linguist, so never mind. <laughs> I know there has to be a lady out there looking for a man who will show them deep love. Ew. That's take creepy them, sounding. Take them to the beach, like they can't go to the beach by themselves. Go purse shopping with them and help them Wait. drill on course. This post this is got filthy. Weird. This, this is got weird. Filthy. Wait. Looking for a man who will show them These deep French love? perverts. What is What's, deep love? What is mean? wrong with you, French Scientologists? Hold on. Jeez, I need clarification. I need to clear a word. What is deep love? Is, she, is that like, does that have some other meaning? It could. I'm uncomfortable with that because I have a short cervix. So I don't know. Take them to the beach. Go purse shopping. Like Now I'm what? wondering what take them to the beach means. I feel like he killed his wife. <laughs> None of this feels comfortable for me at all. Like suddenly I'm very turned off and I want to run. Uh, hold on. Go purse shopping. That's so specific. And help yes. them drill on course. All those things are so off the wall. Yeah. How, PTS like purse shopping. how, how PTS to the middle class. Well, I don't Disgusting mind Disgusting wog DB crim think that I, he's going to make these women out of exchange. How are they going to keep their exchange with him? I was PPS to the middle class because I like stuff because I like fashion and accessories. And I was always like in my mind, like that, I guess I am. I love this stuff. I don't want to not have things and go up the bridge. I want my things. So hold on. I'm really, un this is why it's anonymous. This was really uncomfortable, deep love and deeply uncomfortable. But like, what would be wrong with like showing the guy's photo? If you're trying to set him up, why would you be like, but I'm not going to show you what he looks like. And I don't want you to know who I am. It's like, I, I still don't get it. I really don't get it. And I know, I don't know that I want to. Do you see this comment down here? So cute. Does he want to meet my mom? She's OT8. Of course she is. Yes. It well, does. Apparently sound we know this like guy's not OT. Yeah. He's not OT. He irons his jeans, which makes me uncomfortable. Um, Serge says, buy me an Aaron Birkin. Uh, how do uh, it's not, it's her, Hermes. Is it Hermes? Hermes? Hermes. Birkin. Buy, Birkins buy are me. like $30,000. Yeah. Um, look, I'm, I was kind of into it for a minute. I thought about having like a French boyfriend on the side, but, um, due to this weird, this weird talk and the fact that I do have a shorter cervix, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't know what deep love means. I don't want to know. Take them Any, to the beach, we buy you need, a purse, and drill on course. Okay. We need um, someone who's still in this group to find the 59 freaking comments. I'm sad that I didn't do it, and I should have, but I just was in such a hurry to get the actual posts. I still feel like I did the right thing by skipping comments, because then we wouldn't have had as many posts. Hold on, look at this. Look this up. All kidding aside, can I set my mom up with Jackson Moorhead? <laughs> Oh, see you. Bill. See you. Bill. If you can just email me at growing up in Scientology at gmail.com and I can happy to pass your information along. <laughs> Aaron, are you not like a little turned off and grossed out by this? What is deep love going to the beach, purse shopping, and then drilling on course? That's like all just creepy things to put into one sentence. Sounds like, like a lot of things that are like he would cook and he can cook a nice meal, you know? He, he drives a killer car. You guys can ride on the beach together. 
Yeah, sounds like a lot of things that are not permitted in the Sea Org. Yeah, that's true. It's just, there's just too much there mixed into one sentence. It makes me uncomf. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. This is another one I found very confusing from a Scientology perspective. Sarah Raphael is in search of an FSM for my 18-year-old daughter. Guys, an FSM is someone who earns commissions by getting people into Scientology and yeah. getting them to keep doing their Scientology auditing and paying more money. Why would you be searching for an FSM for your own daughter? You would, I, I, maybe, maybe other Scientologists have different experiences with all this. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you what, just? What it means to me her? is my kid is not interested in Scientology and they don't like me. So I can't talk to them about it. So I'm looking for someone on her level. Yeah. Okay. So in search of an FSM for my 18 year old daughter, someone based in Clearwater who can meet in person, ideally someone she can confide in and gel with. So I suspect someone younger, chill and experienced in helping newer members. Okay. So that means her kid is not a Scientologist and she's never been able to make it happen. Yep. That's exactly what that means. <clears throat> I'm trying to get her set up at flag for the purification rundown or div six courses. Again, those are the first. Uh, yeah. So she's never done do. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Please share recommendations. Do you think this is a newer Scientology mom? Because if this kid is 18 and hasn't done a purif yet, I had like three purifs under my belt by the time I was 18. Yeah, no, it's weird. If you're in Clearwater and you're 18, you're all, you're not going to, you're not, and you, and you were raised in Clearwater. Chances are you ain't going to be a Scientologist. So it, yeah, I guess it's possible that Sarah's a brand new member, but do they allow brand new members into this Facebook group? Maybe, maybe they do. That I don't know. Yeah. I got to say, they do use the language pretty well. So I don't think they're a brand new Scientologist. No, but they may be like five years in. Like, it just doesn't seem like that kid was born and raised to me. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree. Um. Oh, my God. I chuckled when I when I read this one earlier. Y'all ready for this? Dun, 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 Why are we dun, doing dun, this anonymous dun, dun. crap? I'm tired of it. I would never allow anyone to post anonymously if I was running this group. Mm. Okay, guys, here we go. This is not mom related. Yeah, I would have deleted the post right there if I was moderating this group. Bye bye. It's called Scientology Moms, but let's be real. It's not. It's Real Housewives of Scientology. This is how they <laughs> shit on each other and show off their new BMWs and their shiny new Thetans and their new OT children. That's all this group is for. Okay, yep. so not mom related, but figured you guys would be the most sane group to ask this to because Scientologists are the sanest people on the planet, as we know. Does anyone have experience handling inappropriate 2D flow comments in a work setting? That's Scientology speak for sexual harassment in the workplace. Yes. Yes. Um, there is a it's guy that the I work father in law from the last post. Totally. Totally. Does anyone have experience handling? Oh, no, read that part. This is a guy that I work with closely, that I work closely with on projects. We're both 1099, but he's more senior to me, if that matters. We work remotely. I've never met him in person, and all our comm is in text, email, or through Zoom. Several weeks ago, he told me his wife was jealous of me. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Trouble's afoot. I thought it was bizarre since up to that point, him and I literally didn't talk about anything other than work cycles. Since then, he's originated more things about his marriage not going well and how he's trying to repair it. He said he cheated on her a couple years ago. This is all over text with someone you've never met? Yeah, there's more to this story she's not sharing. Like, oh, why would you Zoom let it go calls. that far? So they are doing Zoom calls. Yeah, but again, why are we taking this to Scientology moms? Yeah. Hans Christian Schwartz is asking, what is 1099? That when it's when you work as an independent contractor instead of a salaried employee. Right. Um, okay. So I thought it was bizarre. Okay. So he, he's originated. His marriage is not going well. He's trying to repair it. He said he cheated on her a couple of weeks ago, which was the worst mistake ever. Yeah. Again, what, why, why, how did it get this far? No, it gets better. We're going to find out why she let it go this far. He's still trying to fix it and regain the trust. Based on that, I started disseminating to him with marriage materials. Oh, God. There you go. The guy's 
totally uh, crossing inappropriate boundaries with you and you're permitting it to occur. Yeah. Because you think you can use it to get them into Scientology. Instead of just talking to HR, like you should do. Like, why are we bringing it here? You go to your HR department. Yeah. Last week, he made two comments on two different occasions that I wasn't 100% sure if they were 2D flowy or if it was my imagination. So I brushed it off at the time and introverted on it afterwards. He was... <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Today, he overtly said something. I told him to stop and he said, okay, oh if that God. was the end, that would be great. Really? It's still, it's still not too much. What okay. a pathetic turd. If that was the end, that'd be great. But in predicting human behavior, because clearly she's great at that. Yeah. And based on past experience, unfortunately, a similar situation happened with someone else when I was in my 20s. He is inevitably going to make another comment and I'm going to have to cut calm and stop working with the company. Okay. What? Those, those are the only options there. <laughs> I would prefer weird. not to do that in this case, as I really enjoy the company and it is a great opportunity, but obviously I want to be cause over the situation and I'm not willing to have this continue. To be honest, it's annoying to me that it's already taken up this many attention units, which is exactly how real Scientologists yeah. speak in the wild. It sure is taking up a lot of attention units. Um. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to zoom in. Because you only have so many. Yeah, it's taken up this many attention units that I'm writing a Facebook post about it. Well, because that's Instead what you should do with or Yeah, that's what you should do with your important problems. Go to Facebook. Exactly. Why wouldn't you use your attention units to go to HR? Why would you have to be the one to quit the job? Maybe she doesn't want to send him running into the hands of the Sykes. So it's funny. She feels like her only option would be to leave. Like is she, is she, she doesn't see like there's more to this story. Like, what do you mean? Why, what person would be like this person's hi, honey. Uh, what, what person would be like, this guy is making me feel really uncomfortable telling me these uncomfortable sexual things. I'm going to have to quit guys. What? Report it to wanna, HR. But, but I really just want to be a cause though. I just want to be a cause. Okay. Over the, oh, I, over the sit, over the sit. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is, has anyone effectively handled someone like this while still maintaining high ARC? Why do you have to maintain high ARC with someone who's sexually harassing you at work? Like, can we just act and move on? Act. See, people think I'm act. kidding when I say act. The Scientologists do this. Act is, act is Scientology speak for acknowledge. Uh, Rachel D is asking, what are attention units? It's just pieces of your attention, literally. Taking yeah, up just, your attention, Scientologists yeah, just Taking say, up your energy, your effort, your attention. Like they just the crying attention. baby is just taking up all my attention units because I have to go deal with that. Yeah. It's just taking up what you're having to deal with at the time. It's so dumb. Why can't we just say that? that? Like, why no. can't we just say that? I love people who have to throw out Scientology words like this so much. Even writing the word sit instead of situation, they use that all the time. What's the sit? Yeah, it's an act. Can we just act and move on? Act. Oh. That's my favorite oh, word. Oh, it's gross. The last paragraph killed me because this whole time I'm thinking, it's got to be a single woman, right? I spoke to my husband about it. Wow. You, 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 she's already spoken to her husband about it. And he thinks the guy isn't going to stop. We'll continue to covertly make 2D flow comments since he clearly has unhandled overts and missed withholds on the dynamic. Oh my fucking God. Oh that's my the, God. That's the best Scientology paragraph we've ever read on the air. He, since the guy is going to stop, continue. The her husband didn't insist that she go to HR and report the guy. No, instead we have uh, what is unhandled overs and myth with missed withholds. Yes, they're diagnosing the guy. It's so weird, and they're also talking about her quitting. Like that just makes me think you're you don't have any common sense. Like you must not have any common sense. What guys? What do we do in the workplace when somebody is being sexually harassing? I mean, unless you enjoy it, you report it to HR. Either you have a fling or you go report it. 
That's my motto. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Let's see. Meadow Vernil. Oh, wait. I know that name. I know that family. Um, but this must be someone who married into the family because I don't know. I'm not familiar with Meadow. Okay. Hey, mamas. I told you someone created some rule to you have to start these posts with Hey, mamas. I'm telling you. All right. I just wanted to post a success that I thought others might find useful too. I'm sure many of you already know of Mace Kingsley, but if you don't, it's a beautiful field group that audits children and helps families in Clearwater, Florida. Here is the link and the number. I swear to God, this post, this group was created as a recruiting pool for Mace Kingsley and for no other reason. Seems to be. Um, after hearing from some mama friends about how amazing it was, I took my kids there and they both got specialist auditing programs. One was two and a half and the other three months old. What? Oh, uh, this is such a racket. Do you know how much that probably cost, Aaron? Thousands I mean, of dollars. To you're not allowed to charge. Old. You're not allowed to charge less for auditing outside of an org than they charge inside an org. Now, I know prices have gone up since the last time I would have been familiar with them, but I remember the cost of an intensive at a class five org was about $2,800 I was gonna for, say three grand. for 12 and a half hours of auditing. Now, somebody might go, that's for professional auditing in the HGC and a child might get introductory auditing or assist processes. Now, if that is true, you, I'm, and I don't know if this is you, there's something called just an assist intensive, $350 for 12 and a half hours, um, or $363 at Asho it was, but so let's just say about $30 an hour to have someone give your three month old various commands and just to acknowledge them. Like you sit that, you sit that body in that bed, you lay that body in that bed. Thank you. You lay that body in that bed. Thank you. Or other things where you're giving them commands that they, they're already doing. And this is to make them feel like they can control themselves and their body better. Right. It's putting them at cause. Like, yeah. Like you hold that body still. Thank you. You hold that body still. Thank you. You hold that body still. Thank you. Um, Serge is pointing out here that. Say, yeah. Did you see that? Mace Kingsley is not allowed to charge less than orgs. Okay. It's true. But even a sea org org has what's called an assist intensive. My aunt and uncle work there. They charge full rates. Yeah. So look, full rates very well could be like what, what, what I'm just going to go with $2,800 divided by 12.5. It's, it's 200 to two, you know, $225 an hour for auditing usually. Um, okay. So I was desperate. I was in desperate need of some hatting as well with my toddler. As I started running into behaviors, I wasn't totally sure of handling and felt I was messing up. And guess what? They have a parent hat. Look, is it just me? I never reached, I never had anything going on with my kids that I was like, as a parent, I'm not qualified to figure out what to do about this. I don't know. Maybe other parents feel differently. I don't know. Maybe people, I know there are people who just love asking other people for help. And, and trust me, I'm like that. I, you don't see my lives there and I put my whole life out there in the world, but you're right about that. I can't think of a time where like, I really had to turn to Facebook. Now I don't have, I've never had friends either in my life. So I, I don't turn to I think I just, um, I mean, I did, I took Huxley to his, a pediatrician, so yeah. we had regular checkups. Um, I know that was kind of frowned upon, but like, I can't think of a time where I was so lost. Don't they all do the same thing? But I guess they I'm cry, about, they poop. I, mean, they... I know friends and girlfriends and, or, or, you know, wives and husbands are going to be, you know, just chit chatting about kid shit, but usually I'd be chit chatting about shit that happened, not oh my God, can you please help me figure out how to solve this? How do you have problematic behavior from a toddler? Like they're toddlers. Right. They're pro they're all problematic. Like right. wh what they, they get older and they start acting like. That's what I mean. I, I don't understand the posts about like, help my one-year-old just is protesting, eating or going to sleep. Um, I'm, I mean, do you really need to take to a, a group about that? Yeah. I or mean, is it a way for you to brag about the fact that you're on OT7? I'm serious. <laughs> I don't know. Cause it's a very weird thing to do. Like yeah. help. My kid doesn't want to eat. 
All right, let's see where this goes. Let me tell you, we're so lucky to have this as a resource in our area. Every single terminal at Mace Kingsley is an expert in, by the way, terminal is Scientology speak for person. Just a, a person. Human, just a human being. Yeah. Like they will, they'll say like, she's my terminal. Let's just, yeah. she's my person. Like that's just Ter someone. Terminal that can like also to. mean whoever your favorite and most trusted person is. Like if you go, mm -hmm. have you spoken to Maggie? You go, oh no, she's not a terminal for me. Mm -hmm. She's not, right. that means that, that means she's not someone I can go to. She's not an opinion leader. Or if you're like, Chad is my terminal, that he's mm -hmm. my guy. He's the one I go to. This exactly. is what I mean when I describe it, guys, that you literally flip over to a different language. It's yes. a totally different language and it's so right. unnecessary. <laughs> uh, every single terminal at Mace Kingsley is an expert in the L. Ron Hubbard technology on children and love and adore kids. You feel like you're part of a super theta family when you're there. My son was so excited to go in session every day. He would run in yelling, is Daniel ready? His auditor and would run for his sessions. I saw some amazing improvements in him. That paragraph is why I wanted to uh, bring this post up because I wanted to explain that I know a lot of people are asking, what would a, a, an auditing session on a child look like? It would not be on, holding the cans in a chair like you'd see a normal auditing session. It, but here's where I think it's actually really devious. Some child auditing, they just call it playtime. And the purpose of doing this auditing session is basically to brainwash kids into thinking that an auditing session is something they should really look forward to. So literally the, the auditor might say, some, might say, I don't even know because I never did auditing sessions on kids, might say, you know, this is the session or not, but it's just playtime. It's do whatever you want and you're supposed to reinforce and grant them beingness and um, allow them run good control on them and allow them to run good control and other things. But it's literally whatever the child wants to do that he's interested in and will bring him up tone. So whatever the kid wants to do, you let him do it. And then the kid starts to think, oh, the auditing session is where I get to do whatever I want. I can't wait to go in session. And that's why it's so cringy to me that these moms are like, my five-year-old today said he just can't wait for his session. And you're like, yeah, because he doesn't know what an actual Scientology auditing session is. You literally brainwashed him into, well, I should be careful of making um, really exaggerated examples right now because some of them uh, might might not, uh, well, we'll skip it. Like, it's actually it's actually tricking a child into making them think that a Scientology auditing session is something than what it really will be when they get older. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's what Aaron just said. I don't need to add to that, but it's really sick. And Aaron, I wish there was a way, like, why can't that be taken down? Why can't that be reported? Like, why is I don't that know. Okay? I wonder, I don't know what the Mace Kingsley activity falls under. Like, I guarantee Mace Kingsley is not, I would be shocked if Mace Kingsley is considered a church by the government. Serge, if you're in the live chat, you've got any insight into this. So like, I don't think Mace Kingsley is a nonprofit organization. Oh yes. Parents pay for the play. Parents time. pay. It's, I was going to say hardcore. It, yes. It is auditing. It is $200 an hour. Auditor. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think Mace Kingsley field centers are like tax exempt organizations, but maybe they are under I help. I actually just don't know. Guys, any of you experts in this former in this sub part, this part of former Scientology, are these field auditing groups considered like independent little tax exempt organizations under um the Scientology agreement, uh, IRS agreement? You can let me know your if you if you know for sure um at growing up in Scientology at gmail.com. Uh, because I'm wondering if it, is it at least tax deductible? That's kind of where I'm going with that. I have a weird question, which I probably yeah. should know the answer to, but if, if you're a total wog, if you're a total non-Scientologist, is Mace Kingsley just like the other propaganda arms? Like, do they not show themselves as Scientology? So could anybody come in off the street and be like, Oh no, Scientology is very, counseling? no, Mace Kingsley is very open that it's Scientology. They, they are, they are going after the kids of Scientologists. They're not going That's after. That's what I thought. Okay. I just, I, I want to make sure they weren't trying to hide it, but I didn't think so. And that's my opinion. Like, I, I is there some sort of brand new intro? Like, like if one of the mothers who was already taking their kid to Mace Kingsley somehow convinced one of their non-Scientologist friends to let their non-Scientologist kid get auditing at Mace Kingsley, is Mace Kingsley set up to do that? I just don't know. 
anyone watching this who knows the answer to that question, you can email me at growingupinscientology at gmail.com. Um, okay, let's go back to this thing. Okay. I saw some amazing improvements in him. He now also has amazing reality on what it means when mommy or daddy are going in session or on course. And it makes him so happy because he himself was so VGIs with his auditing and he wants to do more. You want to tell what VGIs is? VGIs just means very good indicators. There's GIs, which is good indicators, just means very good. They, they are beaming. VGIs means you're beaming. When you, when you come out of session, uh, you have to be VGIs or <clears throat> that's a problem. If you're not, you could be BIs, which is bad indicator. Yeah, you are not allowed to end a session until the pre-clear is VGIs. Yeah, you can't be and GIs, right? <clears throat> you have to be VGIs. That's right. My three-month-old daughter is super happy and always came out looking so aware of everything and super interested. She let her three-month-old daughter be taken away from her into a, a, a private room with a stranger to and pay hourly for counseling of a three month old baby. That's think about a three month old baby for a minute because my kid is older. It's hard for me to remember, but my sister has a baby that just turned four months old yesterday. Okay. She posted all kinds of pictures of him. I mean, cutest kid. I hope you're not watching, Brianna, because I don't mean this disrespectfully, but I mean, he's just. It's, they, they don't like even really giggle a lot yet. They're kind of just still, they're just coming out of that infant stage where they're just kind of a blob that you have to hold their head and take care of them, feed them. They don't have much of a personality yet. I know like, I remember six months old was so fun. Like five, six months old Huxley was like really starting to become animated and funny and he would laugh a little bit. Yeah, three well, months that's old. That's because your kid went through the implant station. This oh, this yeah, is a this was a Sea Org executive coming back. Okay. That's different, isn't it? I'm sorry. I'm off topic. I mean, if you put like 10, three months old next to each other, could you pick out the ones that were aware and interested and the ones that weren't? <laughs> I just feel sad about this. Like it's sad all around that the parents are, are paying for this, but like, what are you doing with a three month old? Exactly. What are you doing with a three month old? Um, after just the first hour of parent hatting for my husband and I, uh, I blew multiple false datums I oh, had, God. and my operating basis changed in areas I had struggled. That's another good Scientology sentence. Do you, I was gonna say, do you hear the, do you hear the narcissism in this? The superiority just like boils over for me. I blew multiple false datums and my operating basis changed. Like, why can't you just say, how would you say that in regular talk, Aaron? Um, I learned a couple things and I changed a couple things. Yeah, yeah. I learned some new things and I, I changed some things that I realized I was doing wrong. I was just going to say, I learned some things that were, that were false that I was doing wrong. And so I changed, I changed how I do that now. That's all that yeah. means. But we have to get fancy about it because we're Scientologists and we're yeah. superior. Yeah. We also received a program for us to do on our own time together. What, as a couple or a, what? It's, Wait, hold it, on. Oh, they get getting Ew. Scientology after sex, dark? Ed, sex therapy. Is this the one whose husband can't? She's like, touch that desk. <laughs> uh, okay. We also received a program for us to do on our own time together, written out for us with the LRH references attached. So beautiful. This is some of the most theedy weedy shit I have ever seen. I'm so glad that we have it. I was thinking about what would you do auditing for the guy that was impotent, by the way? It made me think of the ashtray when you're like, stand up in that chair. Like, would you just scream at his painter? <laughs> You're what supposed do you to do? Give, you got to be tone 40. I got the answer for you. Okay. When you're doing tone 40 auditing, you give the command. And then when there's no compliance, you have to manually enforce compliance. You have to I mean, quickly, they tried veto. What well, else is going to work? You have to quickly and rapidly increase the amount of effort needed in order to enforce compliance. That's how you conduct 
you know, tone 40 on any sessions. Until so, you're ugly. What if you're ugly? You're not going to get it to. She would comply. just start violently whacking that thing off until something <laughs> happened. Violently sounds like no fun for any man. <laughs> I don't care what kind of weird kinks you have. That doesn't sound like fun. Oh my God. That sucks. That poor man. Then they would go to ethics and the ethics officer would have to help. Or mm. the MLO, the medical liaison go. officer. <laughs> All right. So this is actually a continuation of the same post. I met lots of wonderful, like-minded other mama friends too, which was just an added bonus from being in the environment too. So if you're running into any issues at home, feel like you're messing up, you're just you're not working as a team, or you want to just introduce them to Scientology and their group, whatever it is, they have the tools for every member of the family to help keep a high-toned, strong family unit. Take the care factor there is truly incredible. Wait, La hold on. <laughs> what? 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 You're not working together as a team? Are you talking about your three-month-old? <laughs> is the three-month-old no, I... just not a part of the team because he went through the implant station? Like, what is he doing that's not part of the team. I think she was referring to the husband and the wife. Okay. But then she says the family unit. So I didn't know. Right. Like, if you're okay. So you're running, you're feeling like you're messing up. You're not working as a team. You just, you want to just introduce them to Scientology. So that makes it sound like you can send brand new people into Mace Kingsley. One of you guys could call. I mean, we could call Mace Kingsley and just say, I'm in this mom's group and they kind of talked about you guys, but I don't know anything about it. Can we come in? I heard you guys can fix ED. Can my husband come in? <laughs> Stand up. I heard you guys got killer touch assists that work wonders. Touch that desk. Good. Touch your peener. All right. <laughs> Friday night auditing. Um. Okay. Well... I just wonder okay. what a three-month-old isn't doing to pull its weight. Yeah. Get a job, you bum. I remember you. You still owe me money from last time. What a DB. Don't forget. Don't think I'm going to forget. Oh, my God. The VIG is running on that, too. I don't care that the you're what? three months old. The VIG. The it's, the, it's the interest you pay on the street. I was going to say, that's not a Scientology word. I don't know that one. No, that's not a Scientology word. Okay. All right. Lastly, if you're not in Clearwater, that's totally okay. Marcy Sargent, the ED, up. <laughs> Stop begging for milk. Get it yourself. <laughs> what a bum. <sighs> okay, sorry. Oh go on. God. If you're not in Clearwater, that's okay. Marcy Sargent, the ED. Get it? ED. Get it. No right. pun intended, Marcy is literally going around the world and helping people set up these centers everywhere. So if you're interested in having a beautiful safe haven for your family close to you, please reach out. And in the meantime, call them if you need anything. There's no way I this woman doesn't that. work for them. Somebody save that number and call them. Yeah. Michelle. Oh, um, oh my this God. More bad. Mace Kingsley stuff. Okay. Want to share my win with Mace Kingsley as Meadow Vernule mentioned. This place is heaven. In my opinion, Mace Kingsley is a flag for kids. Oh, my God. They just love it. Oh, my God. My son just completed his auditing program, and I'm blown away. Not to mention my son was really happy to have his auditing, and he loved his auditor so much. He still asks me if we are going in session. I will be. Oh, this one cracked me up. I will be honest. I invalidated auditing for kids long time ago and thought it's useless to audit them when they're not really tracking yet and just a waste of money. <gasps> oh, dang. I'm surprised she wrote that. And it does confirm that, yes, they are paying real money for this shit. That's some wog thing there. And that it's being done on kids who aren't even old enough to know what the hell they're doing. Otherwise, she wouldn't be calling it a waste of money. Why would anyone think that these one month olds are retaining a lot? They're going to get a full-time job at three months. So it's really, really a nasty thing to say. Get up! All you do is sleep all day. All you do is sleep and drink milk. Get the hell out of here and get a job. <laughs> My son was keyed in 
and overwhelmed with body bull bait and environment. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> that means this baby was constantly having sicknesses and illnesses and injuries and was sad and crying all the time. That's th that's what this means in Scientology. Keyed in is keyed in is keyed in is when you're like depressed and nervous and anxious and you're in your own head. It's what Aaron is doing literally. You're like just in your own space. You know, in other is, yeah. words, taking laps around the anxiety pool just like anybody else. Yeah. I mean, who isn't keyed in or nervous about something? It's perfectly normal. But explain explain here, Aaron. What does that sentence mean? Keyed in and overwhelmed with body bull bait and environment. Yeah. Yeah, well, that that's what keyed in was. And the body bull bait means things going wrong with your body. That's what that means, body bull bait. A so, headache? A hernia? <laughs> cramps? You know? No, no, let's just lower a hernia. That's that's pretty, that's that's serious. I'm just talking about, like, having the shits after some bad Chinese. That would be some um, body bull bait. That some would be Taco body Bell. bull bait. Some Taco, Taco Bell, Bell explosions? I... <laughs> I got to do it. Volcanoes aren't the about. only thing exploding that night. I love those Mexican pizzas. It's well worth it. If you're close to home <laughs> also, uh, just cramps guys, just cramps, a headache. That would be body bull bait. My body needs, it needs to get its TRs in. That's how yes. they talk. So I just wanted to explain that because it's so gross. Well, people on the word bull bait, remember guys, when David Miscavige sent out his letter to all of the orgs, I'm just calling it a letter, but they call it something different. He referred to the COVID pandemic and lockdown as a planetary bull bait. He sure did. That's what that means. Just something that's a distraction and trying to throw you off. Um, so this child was overwhelmed with body bull bait and environment, which just means they're, Being it sounds like the kid's probably, you know, maybe has autism and doesn't like a lot of the noise and the, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like she's just basically making it sound like her kid was having a very uh, not good experience. And guys, that's the sad part too. Cause I don't know much about autism. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you do Aaron, but like those are real, real things that occur with human beings. And Scientology doesn't, doesn't acknowledge any of that, that that's real or exists and we can fix it with some electrolytes and salt and potassium. So what's the problem? But it's really sad to me that these kids from one month old, some of them are put in a room and forced these things upon them. And then by the time they're five or six, they're having this environmental issues and body bull bait. And it's like, my dad, get your TRs in when there really could be a real underlying issue there. And that's really yeah. sad to me. Like, that's really sad. Yeah, I totally And that agree. could be going on with this kid. I don't. Did she say how old this kid was? Um, I, I don't remember if, I don't think she okay. did. I don't think she did. Yeah. <clears throat> but since he started his auditing, he's been an angel as he is my sweet boy returned. And I understood how wrong I was. Huh? Also the hatting for parents. It's just unbelievable. Parents who had no parent consultation. What? What? Oh, parents who had no parent consultation, highly. Yeah, she was one who didn't have that consultation. Remember, she thought it was just hocus pocus. Uh, oh, it I still goes her. on. Jesus. Oh, God. I never had experienced such a place where kids, no matter the age, treated with such dignity and respect, where everyone is focused on their interests and their betterment. The whole setup just blows my mind. They treat them as adults. Adult PCs, pre-clears. That's just a person going in session. They do DFP interviews. DFP means director of processing. They do all the standard things. Since I'm an auditor, it was something that really got me. So she's an auditor, but she can't figure out how to handle her kid. So she and she thinks other. it's ridiculous to audit a child on uh, of a young age. That's incredible. I smell this a retread. I, I I did not realize the person making that comment was someone who was already a trained auditor themselves, and pretty much realized, yeah, aud auditing a child has no idea what you're doing is a waste of time. I smell a retread. I think this person's going to be brought into ethics and forced to redo a yeah. couple levels there. Yeah. I also you just have to crapped point out, on Sir Hubbard. There's no special courses in Scientology on how to specifically audit children. I've never understood how some of these Scientology auditors come out and they're like, I have a specialty in children. There's no auditor courses in Scientology on how to audit children. 
Oh, no, that's right. That's right. But there's, that is weird, but there are um, kids there's the, programs. The like booklets. A, yeah, yeah. Like there's child Dianetics, but was that taken out? Is that not a thing anymore? I don't think child Dianetics is a thing anymore, but I couldn't swear okay. to it. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, I could see, I could just see how my kids were so happy and like at home as Thetans. I understood the importance of auditing the kids starting at a young age. They are the future and they are our tomorrow. If we help them to be cause over their case until they will be able to do their bridge, can you just imagine? Can you imagine have other Mace Kingsleys around the world where the kids can be audited and be keyed out and parents can get help and had it on parenting? I thought it would be a great setup for us to come back and have next generation in a better oh, place. You know what she means by that? Come back. Yeah. I could go on and on, and I'm sure other Clearly. moms had their wins and can relate. I just wanted to put this out there to encourage anyone who has false data like I did, just to get your kids to Mace Kingsley, because frankly, kids need auditing just by being born and starting new life, and then life happens every day. I'm now fully determined to have my kids in session as much as possible and get their bridge at Mace Kingsley. Nowhere else. Wow. Just the facts, um, Dan. Just That's gross. the facts, Dan. Oh, man, there's one that I'm hoping we have time to get to, but we're going to keep taking these in sequence. Okay, Tina Fernandez. Finally, someone posting under their real name. Okay, if I can do it, so can you. I have three kids, homeschool, and I work at Applied Scholastics Online Academy. Wow, Tina. My successful action, training and persistence. We go to our local Oregon, Orange County, California, as a family on Sundays. It's our church. We attend once a week or more if we can. That's a totally non-standard schedule. What the hell is she talking That's about? really non-standard. Out ethics, DB Crim, <laughs> totally out KSW. Agreed. By the way, I had a, a dream. It was more like a nightmare last week. Um, Tell us. That I, I killed a midget in a in a staple store. Okay, Aaron. <laughs> no. The the key here is why. Why? I'm just saying I don't it was a little person. It was like David Miscavige. Okay. In the dream. I ended up killing him for violating L. Ron Hubbard's what is a course policy letter. <laughs> You're lying. I'm dead serious. Now, when I say killed him, I meant I was like, I was, it was a little person like David Miscavige size. And for some reason it was a crazy dream. It wasn't a dream. It was more like a nightmare. I was at an office hit, depot. I was hitting him against things in the, like a, a Staples store, like an office depot. Yeah. Like into a file cabinet and like into the paper. Like it was, it was, it was like a nightmare. I woke up like, oh my God. Oh, I knew I didn't kill that little person. You but it beat was, somebody to death at a Best Buy? But I was holding them by their ankles. Like it was a, it was David Miscavige sized. Okay. So it was like this. And, and, and he wasn't, ta I was trying to confront him on violations of the, what is a course policy letter and he wasn't taking it seriously. And so I had to, I had to get his attention a little bit and he still wasn't taking it seriously. And I kept whacking him into things in the office, the office depot. And then the next thing I knew he was dead. And that's when I woke up. Okay. So a couple things, I think we have some unchecked aggression that maybe we want to do a full <laughs> two hours on at some point. Um, and the other thing, how many gummies did you eat that night? I, I mean, I don't know. Not, not a lot. <laughs> That's the craziest thing oh. I've heard in a while. Probably this week. What is today? Tuesday? Definitely so far this oh. week. Yeah, no, Aaron, it was it was crazy. I had to tell someone I woke up. I was like, I had the craziest dream. And killing the midget was not the crazy part. The crazy part was that it was for violating what is a course. <laughs> Those are some scary flashbacks. I haven't even thought of the what is a course policy letter for like 15 years. Oh, we're so sorry that happened. But yeah, someone <sighs> said, yeah, we need to do a deep dive on that. We'll we're going to address that a little more. We're going to address that a little more at some point. <sighs> All right. Let's see. You can, where are we at on this thing? Oh yeah. It's a total non-standard schedule. Oh, that's why it reminded me because a non-standard schedule is a violation oh, what is of a the course. what is a course. Is yes, a violation of what is that's a course. right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, somehow this dilettante lady gets away with going to, going to course one day a week. 
on a yeah, Sunday, which is the shortest day of, you know, the whole thing. Um, okay. Uh, it's our church. Da, 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 da. Oh, and I'm on the OT committee. Lottie freaking dot. Mm -hmm. That's a big okay. deal though. That's a big deal. You can help your org. <laughs> yeah. You can help your org and your dynamics so much by attending course and being connected. There's no better way to get at cause over life than source study and auditing. Uh, just by persisting and carrying on, I got through student hat, pro TRs, upper and duct TRs, and pro metering at my local org before I started OT7. Every post is an excuse to say you're on OT7. I'm on seven. A hundred percent. I'm so glad we're able to show this to the world. That's you know all these. this mom group is about is what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So remember, people wouldn't even say OT7 after a while. They'd say, I'm on the level. Oh my God. I went to flag and I got, I started the level. Why didn't we think to lie about this? I wish I would have traveled to different <laughs> orgs just to be like, I'm on seven, but you had, you have to have your little pack that you carry. Yep. You just got to have your little, your, your little, weird little pack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I wish I'd have done that. While on OT7 at home, I continued training at my org and completed PTSSP and Academy Level Zero and audited my daughter as my student PC. Oh, my God. That is disgusting. There's a part on Level Zero that auditing, you know, the 0A and the 0B lists, that auditing your own child would honestly be sexual abuse. Seriously? Yes. Okay, so let's do it. We're probably deep enough into the video that we can briefly discuss this. Okay, I think the zero A list is 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 um one of them is terminals, one of them is subjects. So one of them is different kinds of people, one of them is different kinds of subjects. So for the per uh, Serge, I know you're in there. Do you remember which one's zero A and zero B? So let's just say that the first one is um terminals. So people. The idea is what people would you um have trouble communicating with? You're supposed to pick the most offensive and horrible things you could. Um so it might be like prostitute, drug dealer, um, hooker, rapist, like, yeah, routine A, uh, terminals is A. So it would be, you, and so you, you put a list of, of the things that people would be anything negative and derogatory associated with, with terminals. I mean, honestly, I mean, somebody, uh, an auditor can put whatever they want on this list. An auditor could even go a black person or a white person or a Chinese person, whatever they thought the person they were auditing might have uh, trouble communicating with, but it's going to include horrible things like drug dealer, hooker, stripper, th that, you know, things that a young child would have bad associations with for sure. Right. That's really sick. And you assess the list and any item that reads you then, um, go, okay, what would you say, um, in the, the different flows? So like, what could you say? Uh, uh, what, what would you say to a blank? What would a blank say to you? What would you say to a blank? What would a blank say to you? Um, uh, and then, okay, when you finished doing this with subject, uh, with terminals, identities, you do it with subjects. Okay. It is intentionally supposed to be the most disgusting, degrading, taboo subjects. And um, uh, uh, Serge, type in the comments some examples of some subjects that could be on a zero B list and I'll throw them up on the screen. Um, no, you don't do prepared lists on zero A and zero B. They're tailor-made lists, Cornelius. Um, That's gross. Yeah. So she did this with her daughter. So Serge used as an example. If you were to talk to a pedo about that, what would you say to exactly? Yeah. So what, yeah. So what could you, what would you say to a pedo? Thank you. If you were to talk to a pedo, what would you say about to, exactly? What would How come I never heard you? this list assessed in the academy? Like I heard all those those lists assessed when people were practicing doing their levels. I've never heard this. It's the zero zero A and zero B are it's are the act the final core um, of grade zero. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Now um, I'm looking to see if surge. Yeah. So here's just an example of an item that would be on the subjects list. Gross. Yes. Um, how about, I, I, I don't know if I can actually say the things that I want to say. In other words, the things that I want to say are so bad. 
I don't know if I can say them on YouTube. And it does not matter how old or young the preclear is. In fact, the subjects that are that are put in these lists are so um, inappropriate and gross that when they're done on young children, the children used to ha uh, usually have to be educated as to what these things mean before the list can be assessed. Oh, ew. Yeah. I'm surprised that she said this in the group then. Yeah. That she did this. Yeah. It's, it's, if you're doing it on adults, it's intensely and intent and intentionally uncomfortable. If you're doing it on kids, it's a crime. I mean, yeah. no shock, but that's really awful. Yeah. So, okay. While I was at home, I continued training at my org and completed PTSSP and Academy level zero and audited my daughter as my student PC. Since then she has moved up the bridge through pure of student hat pro TRs up Rindox at 14 years old. This year I completed OT seven and then did OT eight right away. Big time and money saver to do it this way. <laughs> Since I returned from the ship, I carried on at my local org and just completed Academy, Academy level one with my child as student PC again. Um, working on your studies continuously will get you there, even with limited time or on a reduced study schedule. Every step, every course, it all pays off. I would really like to encourage all moms to do your training and audit your children. She's no longer talking about child introductory auditing. She's talking no. about auditing children on major Scientology grades. Yes. Yes, that's where the abuse occurs. Um, it is that's so really much terrible. fun. It's so much fun. It's such an amazing gift you can give them in yourself. You can enjoy it. All right, who is this person? Tina. That's Tina. Fernandez. That's who wrote the post. Tina Fernandez. So really, once again, this entire post was just a brag about the fact that she'd finished OT8. Totally. Yeah. Don't you think so? I mean, that's all these posts are. Yeah. Wow. The light lasted for an hour. When are you going to like just get yourself some new ones? It was just your birthday a few days ago. Why don't you just get yourself some lights? Because then that would get rid of all the fun of people seeing me jump up to fix them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do, don't we have to get off here pretty soon? Yeah, we should. We should wrap it up. But before we... I was going to say, with this many people, guys, hit like, because I forget to do that. But also, people come follow my channel. I'm oh, almost yeah, yeah. 13,000. I only need like 100 more people to get to 13,000. Here, let me... Uh... Yeah, you can find Reese at Relatable Reese, and uh, her thing is linked in the description down below. Let's jump through these super chats real quick. Let's do it. Barbara Mangano, thanks for introducing me to 13,000 of your friends. Now they're my friends. I love that. That's nice. Paula Puffer loves your outfit and your glasses. Hi, guys. This is so totally Theta. Blake. <laughs> Uh, Nora, Alina, thank you for all the job screenshotting, Reese. Oh, man, it was a lot, wasn't it? Yeah. There's still more. Is this baby the new body from the dying grandma from last week? Maybe she, maybe she's pissed and not as fun as she claimed. Remember the oh one from last week? Oh, my God. Week? Yes. <laughs> Carrie, I finally made it to one of these lives. You two are amazing. I look every day for your videos together, and my kids know better than to bug me while I'm watching. <laughs> LOL, love you both. That's awesome. Thanks, Care. Blake Reed. It's so hard to read some of this. It's like they don't even recognize their children as human and more like thinking machines. And they're going to Facebook is like calling IT. So sad. Guys, or Aaron, all of a sudden people are saying, Reese, how do we get to your channel? There's no link. And what is it called? Can you just show it, Aaron? Uh, yeah. Let me I don't know how it. to post it. I don't know how to post my channel. Maybe Hold Goldie. On, can, is up. Goldie in here? I think so. Hold on, I'll okay. pull it up. I'll pull it up. Give me a sec. Give me a second. There you are. There you are. And hold on, I'll bring that one back in a sec. Share tab. Ta da. There I am. Look at that, guys. I'm so close to 13,000. 
Hot diggity dog. That's great stuff. I know. That's awesome. Follow me. Uh, Lisa Gillespie, handle it with your hand. That's what the girlfriend's doing. That's what the girl, that's what the mistress was for. Yeah. Maybe the hubby with the limp carrot is doing too much solo 2D. <laughs> that is a, a good bet. Paula <laughs> Puffer says this video is so demonetized. That's the thing. It's not. We're totally, we're totally in the clear at this point. I just my checked. video last night got demonetized. My solo. I don't know why. I don't really did you care. It? I did this morning, but I'm not big enough to where it matters. It's like $13 or something for me. So it really doesn't matter. And I'd rather just say what I want. Sweet. Blake Reed, Grant Cardone has the most hateable face I think I've seen in a long while. Also, people who brag about their OT levels are honestly just humble bragging about how much more stupid they are than those who aren't. Uh, I agree with you. Hey, 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 Ron, I heard you mention that you used to work at the Philly office. I had two friends who worked at rock school across the street, used to visit and jam there often, curious if it was the same years. Well, Larry, I was there from 1993 to 2002. Um, you know, it must have been before the convention center was built. The convention center was built, I think, sometime around 2007 or eight, maybe, perhaps, something like that. So uh, let me know, Larry. Um, uh, shoot me a message at growinguppinscientology at gmail.com. Uh, Jerry Nodine, a win for a month, a one month old is realizing he's taller than David Miscavige. Yeah, good one. Shots yeah. fired. SP yeah. Cracker Liquor fan. Why are they referring to them as kids? Isn't that one of the lowest tones and degraded? Aren't they just small beings? Uh, actually, it's a very good point that you say that. Um, being a kid is not a tone level, though. So there's no tone level for children. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they don't believe in kids, but they do call them that. Um, it means kid body it means kid body, right? Yeah. Okay. Alan Zarek. Thank you. Uh, tell her period. Sounds like, uh, he romanced oh her to God. full death. The, the father-in-law whose uh, wife died. Right. Right. Uh, Aaron, put your shirt in the dryer with some ice cubes. Sorry, Reese takes the wrinkles right out. I've actually tried that before. Um, Does that work. I've never heard of that. Well, it's a, you know, cause it melts the ice and it uh, evaporates and it sort of like steams it, but yeah, um, I get that. yeah. Okay. Paula Puffer. So, or, or she's so brainwashed. She thinks it's her fault. Oh, the ED part, maybe Uh Kabbalah center is not a cult since you wondered about that in some previous videos, Roscoe, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I think this is something a lot of people disagree on. So, but uh, thank you for the comment. Uh, Stacy Lugo. I'm obsessed with both of you. Um, it's the highlight of my day. Thank you for posting every day. AA run. I'm such a fan. Can't wait to go to the first protest. I'm in SoCal 30 minutes from the celebrity center. Well, there oh, you go. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So I think that's coming up on the 21st. So less than two weeks. Uh, I'll see you there, Stacy. Fantastic. That's nice. Roscoe. Um, Rav Berg is my terminal. Cool. Righteous. Tell, tell Perion Scientology dating app idea for romancing half to death terminal love gross that's pretty clever quiet girl reese you've been making me laugh every single show love you unconditionally and always will oh that's sweet thanks babe theta bob i deeply love you guys gotta go purse shopping now or maybe the beach oh my god that was too weird Lethanda Grauklinga, maybe they think normal toddler behavior is wog and they're unsure whether a scientology baby should behave differently that's why they ask other scientology moms yeah. It's like they don't remember ever being kids themselves. That's what really gets me. Like, like you guys know what it's like to be a kid. Like, why are you asking? Like, you don't understand what these crazy little yeah, things like, are doing. Yeah, like, why is this one-month-old crying? I know. Lilith says, hey, hey, Ron, did the beef with Mitch Brisker get solved? I was so upset that you two were at odds. I left before it was over. Well, Lilith, fast forward to the end of the video. Gosh, dang it. Um, yeah, it, it, had a, it had a happy ending. It was fun. Um, Roscoe Rossi, real spiritual technology is the zohar are you still talking about kabbalah shit roscoe is that what the, i don't know if he's i i don't know i don't, I don't even know, know what it means on. i don't know what that is uh real quick wog just means non-scientologist yeah someone asked cat okay. and maggie a aaron needs to use his troll of the whole fake navy davy to demo that dream of his i did i did it was like damn you you're not taking what is a course seriously damn you you're not taking what is a course seriously and then it was like uh-oh. 
something happened. I took that too far. All at an office depot. I got one of those dolls. I need to bring it down. Yeah. Okay. The one true Morbs loving this new series. Y'all can't wait for more. Definitely. Got a lot we more still coming. have more, don't we? <laughs> oh yeah, we do. Okay. Alyssa Fleck throwing little Davy space Navy around the staples. Uh, John Vance, if I was expecting, I would want my kid to get Dougie Fresh's Thetan. Oh. Yeah. He's, he he's invented, still alive though, isn't he? I think he's still alive. He invented the beatbox. He was the first person to beat boxes, his claim to fame. Monica Bastian, your stories are so crazy. 100% of the time, you shock me 60% of the time. <laughs> so true, All right, Monica. guys. Well, hey, thank you for joining us for this inaugural episode of um, Real Housewives of Scientology. Uh, this was a lot of fun. This so much. Fun. We'll do it again. So oh, much and, more and, to come. Uh -oh. Yeah, more to come. And guys, we are going to release another audio. Oh, yeah, there's my page again if you want to jump over there for the right reasons. Don't do it if you hate me, though. Um, I don't want any, any Haiti, Haiti type people over there. Guys, I think we're going to release another audio. Yeah, somebody just said something about it. Um, Aaron, you want to do that sometime this week? Yeah, absolutely. Happy okay. to do it tomorrow if you're, if you're around. Happy to do it as well. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us this evening. Thanks Bye, to everyone guys. who talk, watches until the very end. We'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. If you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right